It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings. And I am so fired up for today's guest, a guy that was a total stud on the field and now off the field. I feel like every time I check out CBS Sports HQ, I see him. He's got an awesome podcast, All Things Covered Pod with Patrick Peterson. You can check him out on social media at BMAC underscore sports talk. Of course, I'm talking about the two-time Super Bowl champ, Bryant McFadden. We'll get to Bryant in a second. First, though, it's a new week, which means, number one, Emory Hunt, another CBS Sports HQ superstar. I must be like a CBS Sports HQ hype guy or something. Another CBS Sports HQ guy finished up the NFC West draft picks today. So we now have talked about every single dude that was drafted and some undrafted guys. So check out the College Draft Podcast for sure. We also have a new week, which means we got new winners. We got a new Spread the Word winner via social media. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Just engage in any way. Share, love, like, quote, tweet, reply, whatever it is. I don't even know what they all are. Just do it. I'll notice it. You'll win whatever you want. Sign card, sign picture. I don't care. I'll send it to whoever. Sponsor confirmation email winner. You know they're all over at RossTucker.com on the sponsors page. Or you hear me talk about them like keeps, trying to keep my hair, doing a decent job. I got the bald spot in the back. But if you're watching on YouTube, YouTube.com slash NFL, you can't even see it because of keeps, thankfully. And then the YouTube shout out. Love giving the cameo style shout outs. Later in the week, you just got to make sure you email me after I say you're the winner and say, Ross, I want the shout out to be for whoever. Speaking of shout outs, today's patron of the day, patreon.com slash RT media, Jill Tomasian. Jill, I got your question. We will get to that. First, we got a lot of Steelers news. How about the timing? A lot of Steelers news. And on the big show today, we got Brian McFadden. It's big show time. The big show. All right, so I kind of already introed him. You know about him, long time in the NFL, two stints with the Steelers. But what is jumping out to me right now, he looks totally jacked. He looks bigger than he did when he was playing. Brian, are you able to hear me? Ross, you hear me? Yeah, you got me? Okay, I got you now. Ah, all right. I got we lost you now. for a second there. Anyway, all I was doing was just bragging about how jacked you look, man. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. I, you know, my my saying that I live by now, it's better to look like you used to play than to look like you never played. So that's the goal I'm going for, just to look like I used to play. You know what's so funny, dude? This is the truth. I want to weigh as little as possible for my joints, for my organs, for my life, but still look like okay, that guy I used to play. Like, I lift yes. weights and lift my neck. Well, first of all, I lift my neck because my head's so big, it would look weird if I didn't lift my neck. I, I would look like a bobblehead doll. But I lift, like, my upper body just so people be like, really, NFL lineman? Okay, yeah, maybe I can see that. I'm like a tight end right now. And I'll take – I need to be a thinner tight end, but I'm like a tight end. No doubt. No, Roz, you look, you look amazing. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be on with you. I've been a fan of your work for a long, long time. We got long, good history, too, Ross. I think we go back to 2009, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the NFL broadcast boot camp. Uh, yeah, I was I was one of the um, uh, alumni there. That was my third year doing it, and that mm -hmm. you were one of the first classes, and you're yet another broadcast boot camp success story, man. I think I nailed it all, but in case I missed it, obviously you got the podcast – with Patrick Peterson. Yes, sir. You also are all over CBS Sports HQ. Those are your two main gigs right now, right? No doubt. No doubt. My two main gigs. Uh, I enjoy it. I love I just love talking ball. I love talking sports. The podcast gives it gives me an opportunity to talk other things that are not football related. Uh, but when it comes to my, 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 my niche, you know what I mean? Talking ball, you know, collegiately, professionally. I also do fantasy related content. Uh, gambling related content as well, you know, draft, 
uh, I'm involved with 247 Sports, you know, high school prospects, you know, going to uh, college football. And I just try to have my hands in a lot of different piles. It's awesome, man. I'm the same. Love it. 42. Haven't had to get a real job yet. Let's keep it rolling as long as we can, man. No um, you know, I am the first one to admit, okay, the thing I know the least about when it comes to football is coverages and routes. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what the coverages are. I know the route tree. But especially when they do hybrid coverages, man, or like they do one coverage on one side, one on the other, that that's when they kind of lose me a little bit. Yes, sir. So it's one of the it's, go ahead. No, I was saying, yes, sir, I'm right there with you. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on. Uh -huh. So I got some coverage questions and some personnel questions. So let me start with the coverage question because then it's going to be a bunch of personnel stuff. What coverages are you seeing more of and less of in the NFL these days and why? I'm seeing more double coverages. Uh, and, and what I mean when I say double coverages uh, – Prime example, you might get a call in a huddle. Like for us in Pittsburgh, tight will meet 63, right? So the number is the coverage, the potential coverage you will get, you could get based on the offensive formation, right? So the first number, which was six, you will get a six coverage if they come out in normal personnel, meaning not a slot set, right? Regular formation. You know what I mean? You got one, you got an X, you got a, you got a Z on, on, on the opposite side, tight end. Let's say uh, 21 personnel. You come out of 21 personnel. Granted, you don't usually see that a lot, but if you see a team come out of 21 personnel, which is two wide receivers, one tight end, two running backs, no slot set, just a regular formation, now you get cover six. Now, cover six for the secondary guys is to the uh, – uh, the strong side you're playing quarters so that corner that's on the strong side of the offensive formation he's playing a quarters technique so he's basically playing inside man of the number one wide receiver so you basically have that wide receiver everywhere on the football field unless he runs a china route a china route is basically a five yard in a quick five yard in that's what we call a china route if he runs that china route and you're not impressed now you give the pre-snap alignment, you give the alert China call because you're allowing your flat player to hear and recognize and anticipate he might get a China route that he would have to pick up. But if I'm playing bump and run, all of that is off. There's no need to alert any China because as a corner, that's my man everywhere on the football field. It only changes if I'm playing off technique. If I'm playing off, I have him everywhere on the football field unless he runs a quick China which is that five yard in, in concept. But if I'm playing bump and run, I'm in his grill. I follow him everywhere on the football field for that particular play. The safety to your side, he has the tight end. And he's basically playing the same leverage. Inside leverage on the tight end, he has him pretty much the same responsibility as the corner if he is playing off, off technique like I just uh, explained to you guys. Now to the weak side of the formation, that backside corner, that weak side corner, he's playing a half coverage technique, meaning he's playing like a he's playing like a, a cover two. But for us in Pittsburgh, that weak side uh, corner is basically playing a two man concept on that backside wide receiver, especially if that linebacker to his side gives a lock call. Because now if he gets a lock call, I'm playing two man. That linebacker will get the back if he flares to the weak side. You have a half safety. Uh, over the top of you. So either you're playing a, a generic cover two to the weak side or you're playing a cover two man to the weak side, depending on the communication you get from your uh, your weak side linebacker. So that's the sixth concept. But if you get a slot set, you get both wide receivers on the same side, now you play cover three, the backside number. See, the coverage was tight will me 63. The six is the first cover, which is quarter, quarter, half. You're playing quarters to the, to the strong side. You're playing uh, a half to the weak side. But on the slot set, you're playing a generic cover three. And I know pretty much now I won't assume that everyone that's watching us, watching us and listening to us know what a cover three is. But a cover three is basically cover three zone. You divide the field in threes in a third. Both corners have a third. The middle safety has a third. The, uh, uh, the strong safety is playing flat. You have the other backer playing a flat to the other side of the field as well. So those are double coverages that I'm seeing a lot because now you got to basically be able to adjust to the formation 
that you're getting from offenses. And nowadays you're seeing offenses do so many different uh, uh, different unique exotic things offensively. You don't want to be in a generic one coverage all the time. So you see a lot of double coverages from defenses. One coverage that I'm not seeing a lot is the old fashioned cover too. The old fashioned cover too. You don't usually you're not seeing as much of that as we've seen in years past because, like I said, the offenses have really upped their ante, Ross, and being so exotic. So many cross directional routes. Uh, so many, so many different looks from quarterbacks, uh, being able to manipulate the defense with their eyes. And usually defenses do a bad job in disguise in cover two. So when you go out and play cover two and show your hand, you got two high safeties. We already know what you're in. These quarterbacks that are extremely smart, when they see and know what you're in, they're going to execute and be successful. Dude, that was awesome on so many, on so many levels. So first of all, I think most of the listeners, when you said you're seeing more double coverages, I think most of the listeners probably thought, okay, they're double covering Julio Jones <laughs> yeah. or they'll double covering whoever, right? What you meant was two, and obviously you described it, two different coverages based on what the offense of formation is, what they come out in. What I love about that is – all of that stuff that just happened, we've got a lot of listeners, a lot of people that watch. They don't even know how complicated it is, how detailed it is. I always tell people, like, you cannot be a dumb guy and play in no. the NFL. Like, you. maybe D-line, maybe. <laughs> but you cannot play in the secondary for sure. I mean, just think about that. Okay, if they're going to do like a China route, then you got called China. You got, I mean, you you really – the thing I think that people are most surprised about is how – and obviously your co-host on your show, Peterson, is a tremendous physical uh, talent, but that's not enough. Like, no. you don't become a really good player unless you're a really smart player at your position as well. No question. You got to be a thinker. You got to be able to think on the fly. You got to be able to think when adjustments are being made in game adjustments. Because, Ross, you know about this. You know, sometimes you might go into a game with a particular game plan and it changes on the fly. So for me, defensively in the secondary, number one, you got to communicate. I tell young kids all the time that I talk to that are currently playing football. When you're on the football field, you're not in the library. This is the one opportunity to be as loud as you need to be. You're not in class. So stop being quiet. Talk, communicate, because one thing about communication, if you communicate the wrong thing and everybody hears it, at least everybody's on the same page. So everybody is playing the wrong thing together and the likelihood of it working out is more likely than not if everybody is not on the same page. So when it comes to that alert China call as a corner, you got to scream it. You got to yell it to my nearest flat player. Alert China, alert China. Now he hears it. He's anticipating that China route. So if he hears you say China, 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 he know exactly where route is coming his way. But if I'm playing bump and run, if I'm going to choke the wide receiver, this is our signal for choke, right? When we see that, we know we're bumping. Now he knows, oh, I don't have to worry about number one. All I got to do is worry about getting rerouting this number two, which is a tight end. And if it's a pass play, looking for a black back to come out the flat. If not, I'm playing with free eyes, playing with good body position, free eyes to help the safety out. So those are the things that you have to talk about. And then you go back side to the half side, if my nearest linebacker to the weak side tells me, hey, b Mac, lock, 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 lock. Now I know he's taking the nearest back that comes his way in a flat type concept, a flat route. Now my safety knows, oh, you know what? He's going to hug the inside. He's going to play like a two man. He might disguise a little bit. So I might work with my safety, show like a middle safety to make this quarterback think we're playing some type of three or, or cover seven or cover one, which is a man to man concept. And then as he get into his cadence, we roll into our coverage. And by, that time, awesome. by the time he dissects and sees exactly what we're in, he can't check because he's up against the play clock as well. This is awesome. Um, I, I know you do a lot of work down in Florida. I got to ask you about a couple specific corners. Xavier Howard, you know, he had an awesome year. He's holding out. I guess, how good is he? And what do you think the Dolphins should do here? He's a baller, Ross. He's a baller. I just did my top 10 corners on the Pick 6 podcast last week. Uh, I think it should be releasing this week. I had Xavier and Howard based on the production 
from last year. So this is how I assembled my list based on the production from last year and coming into this year, the expectations. I had Xavier Howard, my number two corner. Ross, he had double digit picks. He had 20 PBUs. I mean, he balled out. He consistently got his hand, his hands on footballs. He's the second best corner in the game right now, if you're asking me, based on what he did last year. So how good is he? He's an elite type corner. When he's healthy, he has shown the ability to be a top tier guy when he has been healthy. Last year, he was healthy and he took the league by storm. Um, and what will happen with the Miami Dolphins and Xavier Howard? See, this is the issue, Ross. So you know about the business side of things, right? And fans, this is something that fans are learning much more of. When they gave Byron Jones that nice, handsome ransom last <laughs> off season, and they drafted a corner in the first round, Noah uh, uh, Igbenogany from Auburn. Now you're serving, no, you're basically giving notice to your top tier corner who was injured in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, Xavier Howard. Listen, you better get it together because we just paid someone more money than you and we drafted a corner in the first round. So you better get it together. So they basically kind of served notice to Xavier Howard. Hey, man, you got to be healthy. You better ball out. He balled out. So he answered the call. Now he's calling you guys out. How can you pay someone more money than me in the same secondary, playing the same position, and he's not better than me? That is the issue. So two things will either happen, Ross. Either Xavier Howard lowers his demand and being disgruntled and want to be removed or want to be paid accordingly, or they trade him. Because I don't foresee the Dolphins being able to pay two corners almost close to $20 million per year. Because I think Byron is getting around $18 million. Right now, Xavier is getting, what, $15 million? Would he even be happy in getting the same amount that Byron Jones is getting? I don't know. I think he want to be paid more than Byron Jones because he knows he's a better player. He has a better resume in a Miami Dolphin uniform than Byron Jones. So either he lowers his demands or they might think about entertaining a trade because also, too, remember this offseason, they brought in McCourty. You know what I mean? Veteran savvy corner from the Patriots. So they've added more depth at the cornerback position. You know what I mean? Like I said, they just drafted Noah uh, a year ago. They brought in Byron Jones. They added uh, McCourty this season. Like, they have a lot of bodies at the cornerback position. They might not be the same guy that Xavier Howard is, but I think they're prepared for life without Xavier Howard if they need to entertain a trade. Safe to say your number one corner is Jalen Ramsey? No question. No question. Straight dog. Straight dog. The reason why I have Jalen my number one, I can easily highlight the coverage ability. I can easily highlight being able to efface the opposing team's best wide receiver. But I have Jalen because he's a football player. He's a football player that happens to play cornerback. Those are the guys that I love watching. You know what I mean? He tackles. He plays with bad intentions to the offensive guy he's going against or the offense that he's going against. And he brings energy. Not to mention he's a lockdown corner. So, yes, he's my number one. Um, I got to ask you a question about your co-host on your podcast. I thought it was interesting. You obviously it's Patrick Peterson. The Arizona Cardinals that they sign AJ Green, they sign JJ Watt. Like it's pretty clear to me when you bring in guys like AJ Green and JJ Watt that they're going all in for this year. I don't know if Steve Kime, the GM, Cliff Kingsbury, they're on the hot seat. Seems like they probably are. They need to win this year. I'm sure you've asked them this on the show. But how does Patrick feel that they're going all in for this year, but they didn't want him to be a part of it? Well, initially, you know, he kind of felt some type of way because he 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 did a lot for the organization. Um, there was a mutual respect from both sides, and that's just the 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 part of the NFL that might not be so kind to Hall of Fame like players. You know, we've seen Hall of Fame like players leave their home team. LaDalian Thompson wasn't in a Chargers uniform forever. You know, Brett Favre, Emmitt Smith, you know, the list can go on and on and on. You know what I mean? So initially it was a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, he, I don't want to say hard feelings, but he felt some type of way. But the thing that Pat is extremely excited about, he's happy about 
the Arizona Cardinals giving him an opportunity, but he's even more happier being with a team, a defense, a head coach, and Coach Zimmer, a defensive staff that will allow him to be Pat Pete. You know what I mean? Play football the way he's been grown uh, accustomed to playing football. Not to mention being around a talented group of guys. The energy, uh, the, the, the the expectations, you know, the enthusiasm, especially not knowing what Aaron Rodgers is going to do in that division of black and blue. If Aaron Rodgers don't play football, instantly the Minnesota Vikings become the number one team in the division. You know what I mean? So just the expectations and the hype that's surrounding uh, the Minnesota Vikings has made it easy to accept being a part of a new team uh, for Pat P. So he's excited. And yes, the Cardinals are making big time moves. You know what I mean? You look at the draft. I really love their draft. Some of the guys they brought in, if they can get a healthy A.J. Green uh, to pair up with DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you still got Captain Kirk, Christian Kirk there, uh, Rondell Moore, who we had on our podcast a few months ago. Uh, you know, just being able to solidify the pass catching position. You got James Conner, you know, who was playing basically on a prove me year type of deal. Uh, they got some they got some guys they've added. Uh, it's going to be a sticky division. But, yeah, Pat, you know, definitely wanted to continue to play in Arizona as most as the case for most veterans who have been a part of an organization for such a long time. But that's not just how the NFL goes. You know, no love lost. You got to understand you got a new opportunity and make the most of it. If you're listening to this podcast or watching it, you like podcasts, check out the All Things Covered at AT Covered Pod on social media with Bryant and Patrick Peterson. And check him out on social media at BMAC underscore sports talk. Bryant, so great to talk with you, man. Uh, I didn't realize it was 2009, but I remembered you being at the boot camp for sure. I couldn't remember if I had your number in my phone or not, but it's, uh, it's awesome to have you on the show. Um, look, I don't know all the DB stuff, but right now I know that our listeners are going to be blown away by just hearing you break down some of the DB stuff, which is exactly what I was looking for. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, Ross, thank you for having me. Anytime you need me, just reach out to me. Thank you. There he is, Bryant McFadden. Man, check him out on YouTube, by the way, as well. He is looking awesome. I'm jealous. I need to go. I need to eat better, I think, and drink less. But keep taking my keeps. I need to keep taking my keeps because that helps me look better. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. That means most of you listening have had some form of hair loss. I'm telling you guys, if you don't care, it's going to shave it. That's cool. That's cool. I got no problem with that. Go for it. Go bald. Look, a lot of guys like to go bald. But if you'd like to keep what you have, start now. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. I've been taking both of them for a while. You can ask my wife. I have not lost any more hair. I don't know if I've gained any back, but I definitely have not lost any more hair. And I was losing it quickly. And I like how I look now. I got the bald spot in the back, but on TV, you can't see it. Two FDA-approved medications. Get them both sent just right to your house. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss like I did a while ago, go to keeps.com slash Ross to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ross to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. Good morning, Ross. A lot of Steelers news to get to. Team released longtime starting right guard David DeCastro, and they signed Trey Turner. Was not expecting that, obviously, Bry, uh, but DeCastro evidently needs to have another ankle surgery. It'll be his third. Depending on how that goes, we'll determine whether or not he ever even plays football again. So the Steelers did the right thing here. They had to cover themselves, save $9.5 million on the cap, now, Trey Turner didn't have a great year last year for the Chargers, but I think they think he's solid, reliable, and we'll see. I, I don't know if I, I I don't know if I envisioned DeCastro playing again. Smart guy, went to Stanford, he's made a lot of money, he's had a good career. I'd be curious to have him come on the show and talk about the pros and cons of playing again after a third ankle surgery. Tux takes. The Steelers also announced that the NFL rejected their plan to have training camp in Latrobe. Yeah, so I guess, Bry, the way it works is 
if the teams wanted to be away from their facility, if they wanted to go to a college like the Steelers have done for decades at St. Vincent College in Latrobe, and it is a magnificent setting, awesome place to have training camp. It's Brian. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. Well, first of all, it's out in the mountains and valleys of Western PA. It's the Appalachian. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. And then like the practice fields are down like in this bowl and there's just big hills all around it. So like they can get thousands of people there and everybody's just sitting on the hill. Like, like it's like a high school game. Like they're just sitting on the hill. It's really, it's really pretty special. But that probably was the problem and why it wasn't approved because maybe they couldn't make it secure enough for what the NFL wants from a COVID protocol standpoint so that they could have it there. I guess there's a lot of boxes they need to check to be able to have training camp away from the facility and the NFL did not approve of theirs. Tux takes. Let's uh, move on talk about the New York Jets. They continue to work on their O-line, signing former Washington right tackle Morgan Moses, one-year deal. Right. Uh, we, we thought this might happen a couple weeks ago. There was a report that Morgan Moses had been offered a multi-year deal. Probably wasn't the money wasn't to his liking. He wanted a one-year deal, go out there, ball out for the Jets, play well, and get a, get a new deal somewhere else, or maybe in New York. But – with Elijah Vera Tucker, Becton last year, Moses, the Jets are really trying to make sure Zach Wilson has some time to throw and can step up in the pocket and operate the offense, which I think is a very smart move by their general manager, Joe Douglas. Tux takes. And finally, good news on the uniform front. The NFL teams are going to be able to wear alternate helmets beginning in 2022. Right, except you had to already submit your 2022 alternate uniform already, which I, it's crazy to me you have to do it that early. I guess they need to make the jerseys to sell for the alternate. I, I don't know. But so a lot of people aren't – a lot of teams aren't going to be able to do like the uh, Bucko Bruce – or, you know, Pat the Patriot until 2023. So I'm glad we're going to get alternate helmets. They said it was about safety, player safety, I guess, um, with the, having more than one helmet. Look, I, I wore two helmets 2002, both iterations, you know, the old school Washington Redskin helmet and then the classic Washington Redskin helmet. It didn't make any difference. From a head injury standpoint, whichever one you were going to wear in the game that week, you wore during practice that week. It made like whoever was the guy that was like, we got to show we're being safe. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's make it so that they can only use one helmet. I, I mean, I just don't understand the logic there at all. I do understand that a lot of you want to join Joe Dolan and I in a best ball draft over at DraftKings. Bring it. I love best ball. Take advantage of any of our sponsors. I've been getting a bunch of people sending me Raycon earbud sponsorships or DraftKings email confirmations or keeps. Send them to me, ross at rosstucker.com. And then boom, you have a chance. Say, I want in on the best ball league. I want to go against you and Joe. And we're going to pick a couple each week. So very much. Looking forward to that. Other than that, I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in sight 
credit. 